About a year ago, I moved my family and I to a new home out in the woods in Tennessee. I wanted to be brief here, but I need to get this off my chest, and after looking into this matter a little more, I have a lot more details that I think will paint a clear picture in the end, so please bear with me. The nights here can be extremely loud. Between the crickets, the tree frogs, and the cicadas, it can almost be deafening. One night, not too long after we moved in, I'd forgotten something in my car and headed outside to get it. The first thing that struck me as odd was that my dog wouldn't go outside with me. My dog goes everywhere with me as I'm her whole world, but not this night. As I held the door open, she looked out and then looked up at me like no. So, I walked out and shut the door behind me. The second thing that caught me off guard was that there was not a peep. It was dead silent. I still shrugged this off and walked down my front steps and headed to my car. When I'd gotten about ten feet from my car, the hairs on the back of my neck stood up. I felt as though something was watching me. I looked around but saw nothing. After I reached in my car for what I'd forgotten to grab earlier, I had this feeling like something was moving towards me. I took a step back and checked around me. All of a sudden, I heard one of the hedges next to me that lined the walkway to our front door rattle. At first, I thought it was a rabbit that I'd spooked, as I had seen one just earlier in the day right where this was. A few seconds later, I heard the sound of a large rock landing a few feet away from me. It hit the walkway and bounced into a shrub. I drew my gun and called out, and said whoever that this was is about to be shot. After a few seconds of nothing, I began to think that maybe this was some local teenagers messing with the new people. I holstered my sidearm, turned and started walking back to my front door. Almost as soon as I turned towards my house, I heard this deep, panting sound. It sounded like a huge dog, but what made me nope back to my front door was that it sounded like it was right behind me. I leaped up onto my porch, turned, and drew my gun again, expecting something right there. But again, there was nothing. A couple of weeks later, I was on my porch at night, sitting on a bench with my wife. She got up and walked inside to get something, and as soon as she shut the door, I heard that panting sound again. I couldn't see anything, yet this sounded like it was right on top of me. The sound was coming from everywhere, and it was very loud. Again, I couldn't see anything, so I noped back inside my house. Now at this point, I was questioning moving here. But after nothing else really happening, I let it go. A month or so later, it was a really rainy and stormy night. This was around 9pm and my wife and I enjoy listening to the rain and talking about how relaxing the rain is. Me, growing up in Oregon, loved the rain and for the past 10 years we lived in Vegas where it would dump the entire year of rain in a day, then be bone dry for the rest of the year. For my wife, who grew up in Nevada, rain was such a rare thing. She loved going outside and watching the rain. So, for us, this is an enjoyable experience. Except this night in particular, things took a weird turn. As we were sitting there talking about the rain and relaxing, my wife stops me and said, Did you hear that? No. What did you hear? I asked. I swear it sounded like a small child calling for help out in the woods beside our house, she said. No, I didn't hear anything, I replied. After a few moments of us listening intently, she said, There it is again. I didn't hear a thing, sweetie. Are you sure you're not just hearing things? I told her. She looked at me offended that I didn't hear anything and said, No. I'm positive. How could you not hear that? It was our son. I think he's out there and got lost. No, he's in the house sleeping on the couch, I replied. We then both looked through the blinds that were open right behind us. 
and we could see all of our children laying there. That's so weird. I swear it sounds like our son, my wife said. Well, it isn't him. He's right there. Besides, I don't hear anything, I told her. She then stands up and says, Well, he's really crying out for help. I need to go look for him. Now at this point, if you knew my wife, you would know she's absolutely creeped out by the woods and wouldn't be caught dead walking into them during daylight, much less at night during a storm. I grabbed her hand and said, I've been listening intently and there's absolutely nobody calling out for help. You need to stay here. At this point I'm getting worried about her. She was acting completely out of character. Not to mention that at this time, she was eight months pregnant with our baby daughter. She then says, What if there's some child out there lost in the woods? Well, first off, I would be able to hear them too. Secondly, there are no other kids around here for miles, and the odds of them being lost a hundred feet from our house that's lit up like a Christmas tree is nil, I told her. I know, but what if it's a kid? She says, before I could say anything else, she stands up and starts walking towards the stairs. I jumped up and grabbed her hand again and said, No, you're not. Get in the house. I don't know what's going on, but you need to go inside. She then complies and we both go inside. I didn't know what that was, but it freaked me out. A few months after this, just as it was getting dark outside, I heard the front door to our house open, and I got up to investigate. We have autistic six-year-old twins, and we have the door set up so that they can't open it without us there. So to hear this sound, it could only be my wife. What was weird was the fact that she usually doesn't go outside without saying something to me. I walked out the front and saw my wife walking down our private road towards the drive on the side of our house. I ask her what she's doing, and she says she was sitting on the back patio and kept hearing a baby crying out in the woods. I said, seriously, and you just decided to walk off into the woods and investigate? She then looks out to the woods and says, see, there it is again, and I can't hear anything, but what I did notice is that it was completely silent out again. I told her just like before, the chances of a baby being out in the woods outside of our house is slim, and that she needed to get back into the house. What if someone left the baby out there? She said. Well, if that were true, I would hear it too, I replied. Now at this point, I was really starting to worry about my wife's mental health. I actually asked her to see a psychiatrist, and she did. Now, looking back, I feel really bad about this, knowing what I do. The key to this moment was that my wife had just given birth to a baby girl a month before. A few days after this, we're out front on the porch. It's early evening and I just mowed the lawn this day, and our three-year-old son was riding around in his little car in front of the house. Now, he knows that he's not allowed outside of a certain area that we mapped off. He loves playing outside but with the road being 50 feet from our front porch, we have to be careful, as a lot of boaters will fly through after drinking all day on their boats. As we were talking, we're both keeping an eye on him. A neighbor drives by and stops to say hi for a second. This interaction took approximately 8 seconds, as all they said were, How are things? Good, we replied, and he told us he would stop by later as his wife got something for the kids. We said, okay, great, and he drove off. I looked over where our son was, and he was gone. I called out his name and ran over to the side of our house, and I could hear his car on our side drive. I scolded him for leaving the area, and he said something in his three-year-old gibberish and pointed to the woods behind our house. You have five seconds to get back to the front of the house, or else, I told him and he adamantly pointed back in the direction of the woods and kept trying to tell me something. I looked off in the direction of the woods and just assumed he saw a deer or a squirrel or something and wanted to see it up close. I walked him back up to the front of the house 
and he cried the whole way there. He got really upset that I wouldn't let him go into the woods, but I just wrote this off as him being curious, and most three-year-old boys are. Now this instance isn't isolated, as our twins have done something similar but not quite as extreme as this. There have been nights where we had just laid down for the night and heard a loud bang on the side of our house on the wall behind our bed. It was so loud that I jumped up and looked out the window. Our floodlight had come on, but I could see nothing. Now the weird part about this is that our bedroom sits about 12 feet from the ground level as we have a full-size basement that's cinder block. I put on my slippers and grabbed one of my 12-gauge shotguns and walked outside to investigate. It was dead silent again. The floodlight that's on the side of the house had clicked off at this point, so I walked over to the end of the deck and shined my light around the yard. There was nothing. I walked around the house and shined the light around intently. As I approached the back side of my house, the hairs on the back of my neck stood up. I felt like something was watching me. I shined the light up in the trees, but again, nothing. I rounded the corner and the first thing I noticed was that my three dogs that were in their area weren't making a peep. Now our dogs have no filter and will bark at anyone and everyone. This includes me, so to see them all hiding with their tails between their legs, not making a peep, really had me worried. As I kept walking, all of a sudden the crickets and frogs started making sounds again. It was as if someone had clicked a switch. I walked back into the house and told my wife that I hadn't seen anything. She shrugged and said okay, as long as our dogs were okay. Due to the circumstances that night, I decided to let the dogs in and sleep with us. This very same thing has happened on all four exterior walls of our house. It's random and annoying, but just like this instance, every time there's nothing going on outside. There have also been times where we were sitting in the house and as I was watching a movie, my wife walked over to me and said, Did you call me? I told her no, and she said she swears she heard me call her name in her ear. She said it was definitely my voice, but she didn't understand because it was so close, and I was a good 20 feet away from her in my recliner. The important part of this was that she was sitting at the table doing something, and the slider to the backyard was open behind her. Now, our patio sits about 20 feet off the ground and is like a balcony as it has no stair access outside. I think the previous owner built it for barbecuing. There have been several instances where she would say she heard someone whisper in her ear, but she couldn't make out the sound. Again, I kept thinking she was going crazy, but as you will see, I think all of this is tied into this final moment where things are revealed. The last thing I want to mention before we get into what just happened is that I have a shooting range built behind my workshop on the opposite side of our property, next to the main road. It's kind of on a downslope, but it works perfectly for what I need it for. The range itself cuts straight into the woods, going about a hundred yards or so. When you're at the downrange, you have woods surrounding you on all sides, except back up to my shop. I have to say, it has always felt creepy when I'm dealing with my targets or mowing. When you're down there, it feels like you're miles from anyone. One day, around five in the evening, I was sighting in a new rifle scope. The sun was still up, but was starting to fade soon, so I knew this was going to be the final test. Up until this point, nothing really happened while I was making my multiple trips downrange other than this feeling of uneasiness. As I got downrange, I kept feeling like someone or something was watching me. I looked around, but didn't see anything. As I was placing stickers over my previous shots, I heard something big off to the side of me. It sounded like a large branch had snapped off a tree. Now, if you've been in the Tennessee woods, you will know that a lot of branches fall off trees randomly out of nowhere, so this is nothing new. Except this time, it was very loud and sounded like fresh, strong wood if that makes any sense. I turned and looked, 
but again couldn't see anything. I started walking back up to my rifle, and I swear I heard someone right behind me. I turned around, but again saw nothing. As I started to walk, I heard this deep growl. It was really deep and loud, and what's worse is that it was all around me. I turned around, facing the range, and started walking backwards. The thought of some rabbit dog charging out of the bushes had me freaked out, so running wasn't a good idea. I slowly walked backwards up the hill to my rifle, but nothing happened. I grabbed my rifle and sprayed the target with rapid fire, hoping to scare off whatever was stalking me. I left ten rounds in the mag and grabbed my rifle back and quickly walked back up to the house. I never told my wife about this as I didn't want her to freak out. Fast forward about a year later from when we moved in and my niece is staying with us as a live-in nanny to earn money over summer break from college. We were on our way back from the store and about a mile from our house I saw two eyes reflecting the headlights coming from a white tree on the side of the road just ahead. It had caught my attention because they were higher than a deer but also a different color and size. Just as I had said, what is that? And squinted. They vanished. I made a comment that it was almost as if it had known I could see its eyes, and it moved. The color was kind of golden and green, but they resembled the mannerisms of a large cat as they felt ominous. It's hard to explain, but I shrugged it off as we were passing the tree and saw nothing. A few moments later, we arrive at the house. As we're getting bags out of the car, my three-year-old came bolting out of the house, excited to see me. As I was waiting to help her carry in her bags, I heard my dog growl. I looked in the direction. She was looking at my neighbor's property across the street. Now, what I saw kept me up all night. Up until this point, I've always been skeptical as I've never seen anything with my own two eyes, even with what had happened to me the year prior. I still had my doubts that it was just my mind playing tricks on me. Now my street is kind of a spread out neighborhood. Each house sits on several acres and at the end of our road is Kentucky Lake. My neighbor's house sits adjacent to my house on about an acre lot. Directly in front of my house is a wall of woods and directly behind my house is several thousand acres of untouched forest. As I was looking across the street to my neighbor's property, I saw a large dark figure between the trees at first. The movement caught me off guard as it looked like something big moved quickly on all fours. Then, when it came out into clear view, it stood up and walked like a man. At first, I didn't know what to make of it. It was very tall. But what was strange about it was the distance it was covering and the fact that when it was in front of his shed, I swear I could see through it. It was clearly walking quickly, but moving faster than any person could at a sprint. More importantly, there was no sound. It was like it was phasing in and out of reality as it moved. I said, what the hell is that? And realized that it was looking directly at us. It had moved at an angle away from us to minimize its time out in the open, and moving as quickly as it could while still being silent. The hairs on the back of my neck stood up as I realized that whatever it was, was stalking us. I told my niece to get in the house now, and I grabbed my son and booked it inside. I grabbed my AR-15 with a short scope and came back outside to see my niece still grabbing stuff out of her car. Knowing I told her firmly and clearly to get in the house, her disregard to my command annoyed me, but still I watched over her without saying a word. As she was slowly walking, she turned towards the woods across the street from my house and suddenly bolted for the house. She ran up the steps in a panicked state. I asked her what she saw and her face was pale as a ghost. She said, I heard something big in the woods walking loudly on the leaves, and when I turned toward it, I heard a deep, guttural growl. I asked her why she didn't come when I told her, 
and she said she thought I was talking to my son. I told her what I'd seen, and she wanted to get a closer look to see if she could see something. I told her that it was not a good idea, and she went anyway. As she was walking down the walkway, I heard the sound of dry leaves crunching in the woods across the street. I told her to stop and come take the flashlight. Now at this point, she's about six foot away from my wife's SUV. As she turned and started walking back to me, I caught a glimpse of something gray and hairy bolt from behind the SUV back across the street into the woods. My porch is a raised porch, and our SUV is about six foot five tall, and whatever this was cleared it about 45 feet in what looked like a single jump. It moved like lightning. Whatever it was, it wanted my niece. It jumped behind the car out of my line of sight and was waiting for her. She still doubted my warnings and grabbed the flashlight and walked back toward the car. As she entered my driveway, she stopped dead in her tracks and leaned forward as if she could see something. I asked her what she saw. She turned and ran back up on the porch with a terrified look on her face, saying, nope, over and over again. She said it was a figure hiding inside of a tree and that she saw its eyes. I asked her what they looked like, and all she could say was that they looked dull red at first, but as she got closer, they looked dead. I said, what do you mean dead? And she said that the pupils looked gray, kind of like the way eyes look when they go blind. She said it was really dark gray, and she swears she could see through it almost like a dark cloud. She wanted to go out again and took a step down the stairs, and as she did, it revealed itself from the tree. I said, get inside, and I went in and locked the door. It looked like a tall human-shaped being. It was really tall and looked ominous as hell. The next morning, we did a height comparison to the tree limb we saw at Standover, and we put its height to around 9 feet tall, and its eyes were about 6 inches apart. At this point, I don't know what this thing was. After doing some research, I think this thing was a glimmer man or crawler. I looked to see if there had been any other sightings in Benton County, but nothing. More importantly, I swear it would phase in and out, almost like a shadow person, but bigger and more obvious. One of the things that makes this fit is that it can communicate telepathically. This explains why everyone was hearing something that nobody else could hear. Secondly, it has a playback-like communication, so when I heard a dog panting, it was probably one of my dogs it had heard. My wife was actually hearing our son crying for help, as he had recently fell and cried for help. The baby crying would be our newborn baby, who she would given birth to recently, and it must have heard me calling my wife's name and kept telepathically calling my wife's name with my voice. Another thing is that my niece had said that night was the night she felt compelled to go back outside. She said she'd felt this thing was communicating with her somehow, and it wanted her to go back outside. The more I read about this thing, the more everything that's been happening over the past year makes sense. One thing that I find extra convincing is that down the roads towards the lake, there's a property that's cordoned off with barbed wire, and there's a wall of forest with no driveway. A lot of the property down our road is underdeveloped owned land, and on one of the trees, there's this large old sign that says, Screamer lives here, with an arrow pointing back into the woods. Now I have to admit, when I first saw the sign, I laughed, thinking maybe the owner screamed at trespassers who entered his property, and teenagers put up the sign to mess with him. But when I did a satellite search of our neighborhood, that entire section of road has no houses or trails or anything. It's just pure forest for as far as the eye can see. One of the things that this thing is said to do is make a loud scream when threatened. Now that you understand my story, I doubt this is the ending. The next question is what can we do? 
I don't want my wife or kids to disappear one day. And if there's more than one of these sightings out there, this really makes the missing 411 make a whole lot of sense. I feel perplexed and scared as to what I can do. I wanted to update. Thank you all for the support. Unfortunately, we can't afford to get a camera system or trail cameras that many have recommended. I'm a disabled veteran, and I just lost my business due to the lockdowns. We're struggling to afford the basic amenities currently. One night when my niece arrived, we went out on the front porch to welcome her. I did notice something that looked like a face staring at me, but what was weird was that as I was staring at it, it moved back into the shadow without moving, if that makes any sense. The one thing that I would like to add in this update that I hadn't thought was connected was about two to three weeks ago, my wife and I had been in an argument about something silly. She decided to walk into our woods to clear her head. I was on the back patio when I noticed her walking down our shooting range. I asked her where she was going, and she said, to cool off. Now, I knew the chances of something happening to her were slim, but I found it odd that she chose to go into the woods rather than simply walking down the road. I quickly got dressed and went to go down to try and bring her back. I went to the end of the range and called her name. After a few minutes of calling out, I heard nothing. Not a peep or a twig or anything. Now the weird part is that it is impossible to move around in these woods without making any sound, especially for her. I was worried that she was walking too far, but I had to get back into the house as our children were alone. It freaked me out because it was as if she had vanished. I went back into the house and debated calling someone, but I figured I would give her a bit more time. I went to the back patio and waited. After about an hour, I started to get really worried. I called out her name again and decided that I would call if she hadn't returned at the hour and a half mark. After another 20 minutes went by, she came walking back out of the woods. Angry that she'd worried me so much, yet also relieved, I asked her what she was thinking. She said, what, as she walked back up into the house. She came in and looked at me like I was crazy. I said, did you not hear me calling out to you? She said she only heard me once and she replied, and this is where it gets crazy. She said, I've only been gone for 10 to 15 minutes. Why are you freaking out? When I told her that she'd been gone for an hour and 20 minutes, she didn't believe me. She also said that when she went down there, she didn't go very far. But when she turned around, she started walking and got worried that she was lost. She said she didn't recognize where she was, but something told her to keep walking. She said it felt strange and that the air felt different. When she came back out of the woods, she was relieved to see the house. Now, the part that upsets me the most about this was that where she said she was was impossible. I was literally standing 20 to 30 feet away from that spot. If she had been there, not only would I have seen her, but she could have talked to me in a normal voice. My concern is that you can see the house from this spot, and how she felt lost is mind-boggling. I don't know what this was. I thought that again she was just losing her mind. I planned to go back where she was with her to prove that you can see the house from there but I want her to show me exactly where all she went, as well as talk me through everything. An update on June 24th, 2022. Weird things kept happening. My three-year-old son was playing on the back patio a few feet away from us, and all of a sudden, the dogs inside jump and start barking as one of our dogs, Duke, that's on the patio with him, comes bolting into the door. I jump up to see what's going on, and my son's pointing at the tree line, saying, Werewolf, Daddy. Werewolf. Now my son loves watching videos of werewolves for toddlers for some reason. I would normally put this off as nothing, but if you saw the look on his face, you would know that he was serious. Plus, with the way my dogs reacted, he had to have seen something. I pulled out my phone and began recording. He kept saying, 
daddy, look, werewolf in the bushes. I tell him I can't see anything, but I can hear something really big in the leaves. An update on September 7th, 2022. My niece quit. She said she couldn't handle all the stuff that's been happening to her. Everything was fine for a while. We kept indoors for the most part. We went out on the porch one night with a flashlight and camera, hoping to catch something. We kept hearing things in the brush, which could be anything. After a while of not seeing anything, we went back inside. I said my prayers and then slept like a baby. My niece, however, did not. She woke up late the next day and seemed a bit jumpy. I asked her what's wrong. She said that she didn't sleep well as something was outside her window. It took a bit of prodding to get her to talk about it. She said she could hear something big outside her window. But every time she looked, she couldn't see anything. She said she heard weird noises that she couldn't describe. She came out to the living room to see if I was still up, but I was fast asleep. She decided to go back to her room and go to sleep watching YouTube on her phone. She said she was almost asleep when she felt something standing right behind her. She turned around and there was nothing. She said she kept having that feeling, but brushed it off as her imagination. That was until about 3 a.m. when she woke up. She said she had her phone on the windowsill playing a video. She had the same feeling as before, but this time it was very intense. Like whatever it was, it wanted to devour her. She turned around quickly and saw what looked like a shadow disappear into the wall in the blink of an eye. She told me this kept happening until she passed out late in the morning. I told her that it was weird as we've never experienced anything like that in the house before. We have had weird things happen, like things disappear for a while, then reappear days or months later in the exact spot they last were. She said it felt like whatever this was, it made her feel like it wanted to hurt her. I told her to keep me updated and let me know if anything else happens. A few days later, she asks if she can use the hot tub that's out back. I explain that it's off and we can't afford to heat it. When we go over to it, I open it to look inside. To my disbelief, not only is it on, but the water looks great, minus a little cleanup that needed to be done. As I'm walking around, all of a sudden, I hear this really loud thump behind me, like a log falling onto the ground or a really big boulder hitting the ground. Imagine an engine block falling 20 feet onto soft soil. It made me jump. I turned around but couldn't see anything as the brush was too thick. I helped her work on the spa. Then she says she's going to go inside and get changed so she can get in. I look around and realize that it's getting dark outside and I really don't want to be out here. I bend over to work on getting the filter cleaned out and I hear what sounds like something big snapping branches and charging at me. It made me jump, then run to the back door. I turned around to see what it was, and nothing. I walk back into the house and walk up the stairs. I tell her I heard something out there, and she looked at me for a minute, then said, Well, I want to get in and relax. She asks if I can leave the back patio door open, so if she needs me, she can call. But according to her, she enjoyed the spa without incident. Every day I notice her getting more anxious and less willing to talk about it. She says every night something new happens to her, but when I ask her to elaborate, she would refuse. A few nights later, I walk out on the porch and notice it's dead quiet again. I ask her to come out on the porch with me but she says she's tired and wants to call her boyfriend and go to bed. My wife gets up early and takes care of the kids, and it's my job to handle the night shift, so she's in bed at this point. I decide I don't have the guts to do this alone, so I put on a movie and relax in my recliner. I end up falling asleep, then wake up at 3am to a noise coming from my niece's room. It sounds like a deep voice, and I knock on the door. I call out several times but get nothing in response. I figure it must be her video and decide to let it be. I head to bed and just as I start to pass out, 
Another loud bang happens. I wake up to hear what sounds like something skittering on the wall outside of my bedroom. Understand that this is way up in the air and physically impossible. I look out the window but don't see anything. After going out and checking on this bang multiple times over the last year and seeing nothing, I decide to forget it and go back to sleep. The next day my niece comes out and tells me that she had the shadow thing happen again, except this time she left her light on. She said she woke up to getting that feeling again. She said that when she opened her eyes, she could see an extremely tall, shadowy figure standing over the top of her. She said it was moving closer to her, and just as she started to see the details of its face, she turned around in panic, but nothing was there. She said the eyes haunted her, but didn't want to elaborate any farther. The next morning, for the first time ever, my niece is up bright and early. I noticed she looked anxious as she told me that she's headed home for the 4th of July weekend and will be back on Tuesday. I ask her if she's okay and she says yes and quickly walks out the door. Later that day, I get a call from my sister telling me that she won't be coming back. I ask her if everything's alright and she says yes and she just wants to enjoy the rest of her summer. A little while later, I get a call from my niece telling me that she doesn't want to work here anymore as she can't handle the anxiety from whatever is out there. She doesn't elaborate more than that, but whatever has been going on in her room has her petrified. I checked on her room and noticed that she's been sleeping with one of the windows wide open. The window is perfectly accessible from the outside. I don't know what's been going on, but whatever it is, looks like it could have been coming into the room. Fast forward to the 4th of July. I do fireworks out front of the property by the road facing the woods. Due to what's been happening at night, I decided to do them prior to it getting dark outside. We do our fireworks, and just as it starts getting dark, I get everyone inside. After a couple of hours, I remember that my hose is still on the ground and laying out by the road. I head out to clean everything up and put the hose away. While I'm doing this, I notice it's dead silent again, minus the sound of the fireworks in the distance. The hairs on the back of my neck go up, and I get the feeling that I'm being watched again. I hurry and coil the hose, and ran back into the house. I swear, I'm starting to wonder if it's just my mind playing tricks on me at this point. My two buddies and I went on a hunting trip for bull elk last November, and we were having a great time to say the least. That, however, would soon change after what we saw on the third day. Now, I'm not one for superstition, and I don't believe in ghosts at all, but what we saw out there really changed my view about those sort of things. The trip started out normally after we parked our trailers at camp. We got there a day early before the hunt officially started so we could settle in and get some scouting done. Only Eric and I had licenses because Brian didn't draw out this year, but he wanted to come along with us anyway. Brian also brought along his German Shepherd named Lucy, which stayed back at camp with a leash that was connected to a metal spike. The spike was so deep in the ground that I wondered if we would be able to get it out. I asked Brian and he just told me that his dog was so strong that it had to be that deep. I enjoyed playing with Lucy. She was always excited to see me and would greet me by jumping up on two legs and trying to lick my face. Eric, however, was not amused by her and would constantly yell at her to leave him alone. Anyway, the first two days we saw so many cow elk in the valleys and on the sides of the mountains that I thought for sure we would see some bulls out there but there were none among them. It wasn't until the third day of the hunt that we saw a bull elk, but it was too far away to take a shot at. And even if we were able to hit it, it would take hours trying to pack that thing out. So that evening, we decided to hunker down next to some fallen trees and were able to watch a hillside. While we were surveying the area, 
Brian spotted a coyote about 250 yards, walking to a small pond of water strangely as if it was maimed. Eric took out his binoculars to take a closer look, and he started to describe it, saying, That coyote, it ain't looking right. It has a hunch on its back like a bear, and its jaw, oh man, its damn jaw seems like it's been broken, and now it's just drooping there like a dead fish. Let me see those binos, I asked curiously with an outstretched hand. Eric handed them to me, and as he did, he seemed to grasp his gun tightly. I took them and looked at the animal and said, You're right, that thing's jaw is just hanging there. Also, did you happen to notice its hair? It's so long and unevenly dispersed. I then handed the binoculars to Brian, and he looked at the coyote for one second and screamed. Shh, Brian, shut up, we're hunting, Eric whispered harshly. What did you see? I asked as I looked at his shocked facial expression. Brian looked at his feet as he muttered. I... I... I saw my dog Lucy, but it wasn't her. I, I don't know what that was. It couldn't have been your dog. When I looked at it, it looked like a dying coyote. It didn't have the large black spot on its back or your dog's strawberry red sides and underbelly, I said in a plain yet confused manner. Well, since we ain't gonna see anything out here cause you screamed like a baby, I'm gonna put that coyote out of its misery. Eric said angrily as he raised his rifle and looked through the scope. A large shot followed, and we saw the animal drop down soon after. It was a clean kill, and Eric was curious about seeing what was wrong with the animal up close, so he started getting ready to hike out. As he got his stuff together, he said, You probably just didn't get a good look at it, Brian. Your dog is fine. Brian stood up and as he brushed the dirt off of his ass, he replied, I swear I saw my dog, but an evil demented version of it with human eyes. But you guys are probably right. There's no way she could have had the strength to yank out the metal stake holding her back at camp. Well, let's go find out the truth about this animal, I said somewhat excitedly as I started walking towards the dead animal. It took us about half an hour to hike over to it and we lost sight of the animal's corpse as we had to pass through some trees. Once we finally got to the spot where the animal had dropped, there was no corpse, just a puddle of blood. However, the blood was blackish and very dense. Eric observed the scene and started to scratch his head as he said, I could have sworn I shot that thing straight through its heart. There's no way it could have just gotten back up and walked off. I had an eerie feeling about the whole situation, and Brian was still afraid that it might have been his dog that got shot. Eric, however, noticed a trail of blood leading into a dark tree line. Without asking, he started to follow it, and he loaded his gun. As he did, me and Brian were both freaked out, and just watched Eric as he went into the forest. He soon went out of sight, and Brian and I couldn't leave him there, so we waited. I passed the time by taking a skinny stick and poking at the puddle of blood. It smelled terrible, and the aroma hit me pretty hard. So much so that my stomach convulsed and I threw up. You okay? Brian asked as he put his hand on my back. Before I could answer, there was a loud shot that echoed through the trees and we both looked at the direction it came from. Must have found the animal, I said as I spit into the grass. As soon as I said this, we could now see Eric, but he was full on sprinting. Run, he screamed as he ran at us. I noticed that he must have dropped his gun because he wasn't carrying it. I was about to ask him what happened, but Brian grabbed my arm and yanked me towards where we had parked the truck. Without hesitation, I ran. We soon made it back to the truck, and my shoulder hurt from the rubbing of the gun strap. I looked back at Eric, who slowed down for nothing. I soon looked behind him and saw nothing chasing us, so I opened the truck and got in without worry. Eric then climbed in and told me to hit the gas and go. 
I was so perplexed on what Eric saw out there, and I knew that he hardly ever got scared of anything, so this started to freak me out. I started driving fast back to camp, and I asked Eric, what did you see out there that was scary enough to make you drop your gun? I don't know, man. That was no damn animal. I followed the trail of blood, and it stopped at the base of a tree, and I was wondering how a coyote was able to climb a tree, but when I looked up, I saw this hairy humanoid creature there. It smelled so bad. Eric went on about how scary that thing was and how he was done with the hunting trip and wanted to go home. We soon pulled into camp and mutually decided that we were going home. I started to pack my things and then felt like something was missing. I then thought to myself, Lucy, where's Brian's dog? She usually always is so excited to see us back at camp. She can't stop barking and whining to be set free. As soon as I thought this, Brian started screaming and crying. I ran over to where he was and saw that his dog was gone. However, on further inspection, I noticed what Brian was looking at. Something had pulled out the metal stake in the ground and strung Lucy up on a nearby tree and it skinned her. Brian just could not stop crying, and Eric ran over to see what was wrong, and just stood there, jaw dropped and frozen. He then muttered, she was skinned alive. There's a bunch of bruising caused by strangling around her neck where the collar is. Shut up, Eric. You ain't helping, I said as I put my shoulder around Brian, who had unstrung his dog's body from the tree. Skinwalker. Eric said in a low tone of voice as he looked into the distance. He then screamed, It's a damn skinwalker. I followed his gaze and saw an animal that looked like Lucy, but it had human eyes and a sickly green glazed looking coat of fur. Brian stopped crying and just stood there, eyes locked on the beast. Eric then whispered with his voice quivering, We all run to the truck on the count of three just leave everything else. Brian and I slowly nodded and agreed to the plan. Okay, three, two, one. Eric whispered sharply and we all took off like a pack of gazelles for the truck. We hopped in and as soon as we did, we saw the skinwalker lunge at us and struck the right side door with such a powerful blow that it nearly tipped over the whole truck. It did not stop me whatsoever and I drove out of there faster than I ever could have. After that, none of us ever went hunting again in that area. We never even went back to claim our camping trailers and supplies. It was too terrifying to think that what happened to Brian's dog could happen to us, and that thing would walk around in our skin. Since that experience, I am now a superstitious person. I was wondering if anyone else has also had any experiences with people that didn't quite seem to be people, like there was something off about them. I had an experience some time ago that I could never shake off. So this happened in Charleston, South Carolina around Christmas of 2017. I used to work at a popular coffee shop that was inside of a popular big box retail store. One day around Christmas time, I had two guests that struck me as odd immediately. They were pale Caucasian women, probably mid-twenties, that both looked nearly identical, but one was about a head taller. They had the exact same haircut, very straight, platinum blonde bowl-like cuts. Their faces were quite round, and their eyes were a noticeably bright hazel color and appeared quite large, but not in like a disproportionate gray alien kind of way. They both also had a fairly odd stiff gait, as though they had a board strapped to their back. They sort of shuffled their feet around when they walked. They both also had oversized sweaters, and I noticed later the shorter one had theirs on backwards. The weird part was their behavior. When they first walked in, 
The shorter one looked around the store as if they'd never been in one. Her overall demeanor was somewhat childlike, like a good customer service rep. I welcomed them in and told them to ask if they had any questions. The short girl looked at the taller one as if for approval. She then slowly nodded her head towards me, mouth slightly agape, and then attempted a hand wave. Instead of waving it at the wrist like most people, she waves with her forearm, palm flat and straight in a sort of robotic windshield wiper motion. She then turns to the taller one who gives her an encouraging nod. They then proceed to walk around the cafe looking at the cups and merchandise. The short girl would often point all around the store and seem to be asking the taller one questions, almost as if this was a guided tour of sorts. Now, obviously, I'm no linguist, but my city is a fairly popular tourist destination, and I've met foreigners from all over the globe. Even if I don't recognize a specific language, I can usually estimate around about where it may be from. Whether it's Germanic, Slavic, Asiatic, Middle Eastern, or whatnot in origin, but the language they spoke to each other was very strange and not like one I've ever heard. Imagine if you mixed Simish with baby babble and sped it up. Lots of guh, blah, and ooh sounds. They continued on checking out the merchandise and going on what seemed to be a Q&A session. They would often open up cups and look inside, grab bags of beans and squeeze and shake them, at one point, the shorter one took apart a French press, and the taller one seemed to be trying to explain what it was for. This went on for about another ten minutes or so, when the short one picked out a studded cup to purchase. She shuffles her way to the counter and places the cup down, frequently looking towards her friend as if looking for reassurance, who again does a simple nod in encouragement. She then looks towards me and attempts to smile which was just bearing her perfectly straight white top teeth as though she were biting her bottom lip and slowly nodding, not saying a word. It was here I noticed her sweater was on backwards, the tag sticking out in front of her neck. Now that I have a good look, I will say she was quite oddly attractive, but there was something about her appearance that gave me uncanny valley vibes. But I couldn't tell you what exactly was off. I will say I don't recall them ever blinking. I scanned the cup and went on the typical checkout spiel, to which there was no reply. When it was time to pay, she pulled out a silver credit card that had no markings whatsoever. No logos, no numbers, no name. Just blank plastic with a chip. She then looks back over to the taller one and says something, who then comes over and finishes the transaction for her showing her as though it was a teaching moment. I hand her the cup and she once again slowly nods her head, mouth ajar, and does her windshield wiper wave. They then shuffle their way out of the cafe and into the rest of the store, and I never saw them again. I've told this story to people before, and they usually hand wave it and say they were probably just tourists from Europe, or maybe they had a condition of sorts. But like I've said, I've encountered many foreigners, and none of them acted this much like a fish out of water, nor was their overall demeanor and behavior this uncanny. I won't rule it out as a possibility, of course, but it doesn't quite fit satisfactory for me. It was just too weird. I don't know. What do you guys think? Have any of you experienced anything similar? Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed that. If you have a scary story you would like me to read in an upcoming video, this is one way to help me guarantee variety in the stories I share. You can email me or post it to my subreddit. I'll drop the details in the video description. Thank you all for listening, and a special thanks to my patrons and channel members who now have early access to ad-free videos as well as other behind-the-scenes content. Thank you to Deborah Malays, Connie Sue, Taya Adwell, Diana Johnston, Vampy Debs, Jasmine Davis, Erica Asir, Fox Mulder, Ram Beltran, Tina, 
Nick Bigdowski, Sarah C.H., Neil Kavanagh, Tiara Sanders, Timothy Stratton, Jennifer Jenkins, Lloyd Rash, Maribel De Luna, Michael O'Malley, Marissa, Kuro, Amber Hobbs, King Slim, Justin Beast Gillespie, Joy Dana, Jay Bardle, Anissa, Stephanie McLaren, Lumini Kami, Skin Crawler, Adiara, Bella Plays 2006, Michelle Welchman, Dana B, Lisa McDonald, Clarice Scott, Madison C, Wasp Sting, Jennifer J, Ashley, Lilypad, Lee, Taya, Wyatt, Gina, Laura, JK06, Fenrizio, Donna, Joey, Big GSC, Tanya, Spaghetti Yolo King, Matthew, October Gypsy, Lisa, Ali, Thomas, Build With Me, Leticia, Fran, Debs, Insomnicats, Stephanie, Summer, Rebecca, Tyra, This Bad Kitty, Your Pappy's Dilly, Lainey, Tripping Balls Through History, Samantha, Erica, Alyssa, Tracy, Killian's Place, April, James Arterburn, Jen, Joy, Handout, Pegasus Genesis, Karen Keating, V. Berry, LJ, Fiona X Fox, Scott, I Like Booty, Monica Level Ace, Chris and Donna, Holly Spry, Kimber, Jasmine, Sanitix, Heather Haven, Kitty Cat Luna 2, ADHD Aurora, Janice, Cinderella Baby, Borderline Betty, Lady Dracoat, Erica Nicole, Snowball Rathena, Melanie, The Honeybee 987, Pretty Girl 215, Ryan, Brooke, Wendy, Crafty Cow, Tina, Dina, Vampy Debs, Patricia, Amber, Krista, Brenda, Absinthe Alice, Christy, Kay, Spider's Web, Ooh La La Andrea, Sue, Monique, Sean Gorman, Emma Lisa, Sigma Cube X, Greg, Chelsea, Amanda Jane, Sam, Zeb Tepe, Sarah C, Austin, Tegan, Lil Smart, Jenny, Gabrielle, Fire 05, Sarah P, James Gargano, Gemma Allen, Monica Level Ace, and Alex. I hope you're doing well, guys. I'll see you all on the next one.